Howdy, y'all. I'm Haley Witters. Check out my episode of Like a Farmer. We've got big names, inspiring stories, all celebrating the American farmer. If you've ever faced adversity and you like having food on the table, you got to be like a farmer. Hey, y'all. It's Pat with Like a Farmer, and I am back in the great city of Nashville. As y'all know, y'all should know this by now, there's no better place I like to be than Music City, USA. And today, I have one of my probably one of the people that I sing their songs the most in the shower, and her <laughs> name is Haley Witters. Haley, <laughs> thanks for coming on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me. I like that. Songs you sing in the shower. You like that? I like that. This has been a long time coming. <laughs> I've got to, I just want to go ahead and say this now, and I don't, I'm open about this. I'm a very mm -hmm. open person. You can call, text, and I'll tell you the truth. I think right now you probably when it comes to female artists you are my you're my female artist crush right what? now I'm gonna go oh on. my gosh yeah. I you're love you're blushing that. a little bit I am blushing it's okay it's okay <laughs> so first and foremost Haley I have to talk about corn okay <laughs> I mean anything when it comes to Haley Witters it seems like corn gets a part of the conversation you're from Iowa yep correct and there's been times that you've classified yourself as the corn star that's what they call me yeah so <laughs> why corn tell me I'm, I'm curious like where the obsession with corn came from I'm also like trying to figure out where that came from originally I think it was like just having grown up in Iowa you know and like it kind of became just like this staple thing that everyone would kind of like identify me with you know yeah, being absolutely. midwestern um uh, kind of being like not one of the first but like a midwestern country artist you know yeah. everyone started like identifying me with corn or something it's so funny and the puns now are just too good you know like the They're fans hilarious. are constantly commenting you know cornographic materials and yeah. corn star That's and corn great. queen you know so um i mean i'm I, I have a good laugh with it, and I just love, you know, it's funny, and it's just fun. <laughs> and you got engaged in a cornfield, too, yeah. is that correct? Well, it was a bean field that year, but okay. yeah, we got engaged in a field, yeah. That was at the family farm? That was the field behind my parents' house, which is the farmer across the road. Okay. But, um, yeah, it was, it, you know during the pandemic like I went home back home to Iowa and I used to just go out to the field take a bottle of wine and that's kind of my holy place just what kind of what I mean what was the wine of choice you a red any or, wine red or I'm white. not picky you know red probably yeah. I like it all I like it all I take you know some beer out there or whatever it was just kind of like where I'd go to chill at the end of the day and um plop a lawn chair down and you know just sit out there and drink and it's beautiful it's like a holy place for me you know it's like where i can absolutely sit out and unwind and you know just look at for miles and miles of soybeans i guess totally i come from a sixth generation citrus and cattle farm in yeah. florida and when you ha it's it's funny you say that because the land that so many people work so hard to create our food mm -hmm. and create our clothes, like mm -hmm. that's also a getaway to go and decompress yeah. when you've had a good day or a bad day. So yeah. I, I totally feel that. I remember yeah. just going back to the farm and just kind of sitting there and just decompress and it's quiet and you can yeah. kind of sit in your thoughts. So I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. We, uh, we're going to start this off with a segment that I've been doing over the past couple months, and it's called This or That. Okay. So you have, to, you have to choose one or the okay. other. Um, we're in Nashville, obviously, mm -hmm. so you have to choose between these two. Okay. Drink a whole bottle of Nashville hot sauce. Oh, my gosh. Or submerge in a ice bath for 10 minutes. Ooh! I might say submerge in an ice bath, but are you going to make me do that right now? Is there an ice no. bath around here? Yeah, no. Surprise, <laughs> are you going to hold me to it? <laughs> I don't think I could do the hot sauce. I don't. I'm. I'm probably going ice bath yeah. too. Yeah. Do you do those? I mean, that's like a popular thing now. Is the ice bath? The ice bath things. I don't. I mean, like I've jumped in some frigid water, but actually having to sit in it for ten minutes. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know. I get that. This is a common one that I've been asking, so I'm curious your answer. You have to either have mitts on okay. the rest of your life. Like, you're not taking them off. <laughs> mitts. Yes. Or a, a football helmet. Probably 
Probably a helmet. You're going helmet? I feel like It'd be like very everybody... hard to play guitar with mitts. That's true. Good point. I mean, a helmet would suck, but at least, you know, like, your head's always protected, right? That's true. <laughs> you can still, like, point. The guitar navigate, thing, yeah, but mitts, you can't really do yeah. anything. No, you that's know? a good point. What's, uh, what's one you would ask me, this or that? Um, I would ask you this or that, man. Um, that's Tennessee or LSU? Wow. So that's a good, obviously university of Florida, I'm a big Gator. Mm -hmm. So I've just naturally, you grow up and you hate mm -hmm. Tennessee and LSU. Um, you know, I'm going to go with just because as I've continued to grow, um, the show like a farmer i yeah. have got i have got a lot of friends a lot of supporters a lot of mentors yeah in nashville yeah i mean like nashville there's a few of them and we've we've got a couple um common ones but they've opened the door to me so i'm yeah. gonna as much oh. and i hope like <laughs> i hope back home my friends and family they don't kill me but i'm gonna go tennessee i'm going tennessee Dang. over lsu wow i'm going tennessee over lsu oh so it can't be gosh, that bad yes. and i have so many people when they see this are gonna give me such a hard time but yeah tennessee over lsu there we go so that was a good one you're getting pegged to sing at one or the two places and you have to choose which one okay. the grand Ole opry mm -hmm. or super bowl grand Ole opry Wow. I I don't sport. I'm not like a good sports person. No, but know. that's huge. You know? I mean, that just shows like the I mecca love the Opry. that some people put the Opry on. Have you played it? I've played it. How many yeah. times? Um, I think I just did my 14th play there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, like the, the Opry for me, like, you know, was the place. Like when I came down here, you know, that was like the thing that made me want to get into this. So yep. it's just a sweet place. I mean, Super Bowl would be, don't get me wrong. Oh, like Super cool. Bowl would be amazing. Yeah. You know, you got to um, throw that in. But there, I'm so bad yeah. at sports. Like yeah. I get excited about the Opry. Roger Goodell. She just said like, if you need somebody <laughs> to play the Super Bowl, we've got Haley. She's yes, down to do it. Yes. The first time that you got asked to play the Opry, yeah. like how did that feel? It was insane. Like my manager called me and he was like, guess what? You're making your Opry debut. And the Opry for me, you know, I came down here when I was like 15 years old and I went to the Grand Ole Opry and I was like, holy cow, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Like I'm moving to Nashville. And this was at 15. Yeah. Gotcha. And so I, you know, I graduated all that and then it was like, boom to Nashville, Tennessee, didn't really have a plan. I was just going to go down there and try and figure it out, you know, come down here. And then, you know, fat flash forward 10 years, yep. 11 years, 10 year town, here, 10 year town, yep. you know, I'm waiting, I'm waiting tables at a mom and pop Cajun restaurant out in Ooh. White's Creek. You know, I'm trying to pay my bills and, and write songs and, and get noticed. And yep. I remember driving home from a shift one night, just smelling like, you know, crappy beer and greasy beignets. <laughs> and I'm just like all sweaty and gross. And I see like up on the billboard coming into town, one of my like peers, someone who had kind of come up in yeah. the town with a little bit. And she's on a billboard cause she's playing the Opry that night. And I'm just like, okay. You know, like she's playing the Opry. Dang, yeah. I'm still waiting tables. Momentum. Like, right is there. that ever going to happen for me? You yeah. know, like, am I actually ever going to get to play the Grand Ole Opry and get to, like, you know, see some of these dreams come true? And within the year, I was playing the Grand Ole Opry. So it's like, it's always been like this, like, kind of was lighthouse like sign, thing like, hey, for me, you know, going. where it's like, keep going. And so, I mean, it's just a, it's been a very special place. Yeah. You know, in my story. And I want to hit on that. So when you think about Like a Farmer, the main objectives that I want to bring to the table mm -hmm. are celebrating the American farmer, but mm -hmm. educating the American people. So mm -hmm. it's for rural America. Like I'm trying yeah. to shed light on not just the success that rural America has day yeah. in, day out, but there's adversity mm -hmm. that comes before the success happens. Totally. And like that right there is a prime time example. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nashville, what people claim is a 10 year town. Mm -hmm. And bef like when you 
look in the mirror and you said, hey, I made it. Like, how many years did you think you were in Nashville? Like, oh it was gosh. longer than 10 I'm years. I'm still, like, saying that. I'm like, yeah. have I made it? You know what I mean? Like, my story has been just a series of, it, you know, it hasn't been one big break. Everyone's yep. like, oh, you got your break. But I feel like my story has been, like, a series of small breaks. And, I mean, I credit a lot of, like, my work ethic, my perseverance, just, like, my will to keep going to like growing up in rural America and in the Midwest. And, you know, a lot of my family members, you know, they, I see that I've seen them work so hard every single day, you know, whether or not a break was coming or whatever, yeah. it's just like, show up, wake up, get out there, work hard. Um, and just persevere and keep going. You know, there's so many things you just can't control. And, um, I've gotten to see just, you know, them wake up every day and work hard no matter what. And I think that that's like something that's always kept me going in this business. Yep. It's like quitting isn't an option, you yep. know, it, duh, it's going to be hard, you know, like just get up and do it. And so, yeah, it's been like a series of small breaks and, um, you know, I just keep going, I guess. Yeah. And like <laughs> your motivation, what you just said is everybody back home getting up every day, working yeah. hard. A majority of where you're from I mean they're working I mean they're farmers yeah like that mindset and that mentality and that work ethic is yeah. kind of what has built you and kept you going today yeah. in Nashville like that's awesome yeah totally I mean I my dad you know he worked at the corn plant growing up you know he worked at ADM corn sweetener so it was like he says like he would wake up like doing the work nobody else really wanted to do, you know? And so that mentality that's kind of stuck with me, like it's a grind. You're not always going to love it, you know, but show up, work hard, do yeah. a great job and it'll pay off. That's awesome. Yeah. Do let's talk about the family and the farming operate. Are they still farming today? My dad farms. Yeah. Okay. My dad yep. farms. Um, he does corn and soybeans and my grandpa had like a sod farm. There's there some good go. stories in there. Uh, and my aunt and uncle, I mean, they did everything. You know, chickens, cows, pigs. Yep. She was raising turkeys at one point, you know. That's and my awesome. uncle, he'll still for farm on the farm. Yeah, That's great. I mm -hmm. live, I try to live vicariously through your social media. Yeah. And it seems like <laughs> every time that you're not singing on a stage, I mean, yeah. you're on a farm. Yeah. Like the other day I saw yeah. you on a tractor. Yeah. Your song had come on. I mean, it's oh, just like yeah. <laughs> something you, you enjoy being on the land. Yeah, I do. I really do. I mean, like that's like where I decompress, you know, being outside, being out on the farm, out in the country, like, you know, um, that's where I can just really unwind yeah. yeah and it seems like a lot of your your song ideas your mm -hmm. album covers or everything goes back to mm -hmm. rural america i mean mm -hmm. what are some things because you have the album raised yeah. i mean that goes back to your hometown mm -hmm. you've i'm sure you've had some songs and mm -hmm. i've been fortunate enough to to listen to some some songs that haven't come out yet that are yeah. unbelievable that i'm super Aww, excited for thanks. but Give me some things that have come from the farm, whether it be song names or mm -hmm. covers or whatever that might be. Man, I mean, so many things. Uh, there's a song on Ray's called Boys Back Home. And that reminds me of, you know, my dad, my uncles. I had tons of cousins. Everyone was afraid to date me because my cousins were state wrestlers. And they were, like, oh. <laughs> afraid they'd get yeah. the crap beat out of them, you know. Um, but it's about, like, those tough strong blue collar hardworking boys that um I grew up with and you know that kind of raised me and um there's a song on my record called Middle of America yep that talks about you know the farms um I remember driving through western Iowa and seeing all these big it was the first time I kind of learned about eminent domain you yep, know and you seeing go. all these signs that were saying you know stop the airport save the farms and I was like what are they talking about? You know, and that was the first time I realized the government can take farms oh, to yeah. build an airport. And I, that just kind of like blew my mind a little bit. So that's in there. There's a song, you know, state wants an airport. They're taking the farms. Some Yellowstone shit. Yeah. Right there, so I mean. it's just like, I mean, you know, this was my scenery, you know, this is like where I grew up. I think when I listen to Alan Jackson records, you know, it's red dirt, it's Georgia, you know, this is, this is my record. This is about the Midwest. You know, it's, um, 
you know, a little more chert rock and, and ball caps than it is cowboy hats, but it's, it's still rural. It's still country. And, yeah. and so this, I was just kind of painting through the lens that I had growing up. Do you, this gets brought, um, to attention a lot and I'm curious yeah. your mindset on it. Like any genre, mm -hmm. there is such thing as fake. Yeah. And, um, Haley Witters, obviously, is somebody that comes from what she sings about. Like, yeah. And you're, you mentioned Alan Jackson. I mean, Alan yeah. Jackson is one of my favorite artists, yes. like when it comes to the country genre. Like, how do you feel about people that come into this town that don't really have that? Like, they're singing about stuff that they don't even know about and they didn't mm -hmm. come from. Like, mm -hmm. you can, I, I was watching an interview the other day. I think it might have been Luke Bryan, who yeah. you, you, you've been on tour with, or maybe yeah. you're going, We're going on, on tour, tour with. We're going on tour this fall. Yeah. Super pumped about mm -hmm. that. But, like, he, he does a farm test. Yeah. Like, hey, I can take somebody out of the farm, and within five minutes, I know if they're real or fake country. Oh, like, yeah. I feel like you've been on the forefront of, like, hey, I'm bringing back, like, old country. Like, there's no mm -hmm. fake country in my music. I mean, I, like, for me, country is, like, authenticity, you know? Yeah. I guess that's kind of what you're saying. Or just, like, music in general, you yeah. know? Like, I feel like I want to feel it. And I can when it's authentic, you know, and when it's not authentic, like you can kind of feel that too, you yeah. know, and, um, I don't know. I just try and, and sing about what I know, you know, and I'm, I'm not good at faking things. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. What, um, we mentioned Alan Jackson he's my favorite. Who's your favorite artist like of all time? I mean, and then right now you got to choose. Yeah. Yep. Like probably Dolly or Alan. Yep. You know, um, That's great. I just love like, like Keith Whitley, like, yep. you know, Alan, Randy Travis. Yep. I grew up on ones. a lot of the chicks from the nineties, you know, Faith Hill, Martina, the chicks, Leon Womack. Yeah. You know, that's the stuff I used to drive around listening to in my truck in high school. You know, everyone's listening to like dashboard confessional <laughs> and all yeah. that. And I'm just driving down in my truck and listening to, you know, um, country music yeah and you mentioned the chicks of the 90s and yeah. i feel like you've been very vocal and a pioneer when you think about women in country music mm. Mm. so you've got the songs and daughters yeah can you explain that a little bit on yeah i feel so, like they're big on hey women in country music too yeah yeah so um nicole galleon started songs and daughters it's a record label okay. and um i met nicole years before she'd started the label um She's a fellow Midwesterner. Um, she's from Kansas. And so we were writing together a lot. And actually, a lot of those songs on Raised, we didn't know it that it would become a record at the time, but we were writing a lot of songs. And I was finding, like, a lot. I, I was really homesick at the time. So I was finding a lot of the songs that we were writing were, like, about the Midwest. Yep. Uh, anyways, about that. Like, then a few years later, I put out a record called The Dream, and I put it on my own indie label, Pegasus. You know, I couldn't yeah. get anyone in town to sign. No one wanted to sign me, so I just was like, well, shoot, I'm just going to start my own label. So I started a so label. And is that still today? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, so I started a label called Pegasus, and I released The Dream on it. And Where'd you come up with the name? Sorry. Um, me and my producer, Jake Gear, came up with it. So I'm a huge, like, John Steinbeck fan. I love Steinbeck. And wow, okay. And he made love Pegasus kind of like his signature in a way or whatever and it said like to the stars on the wings of a pig men must aspire even though they're earthbound and I just thought that was very symbolic a little bit of my own story you know mm -hmm. and and coming from the midwest and um I was the biggest pork producer in the country you know okay. so it's kind of like an ode to my roots a little bit yeah. you know and um I love that you keep going back to your roots I mean yeah that is, and because if people for people that don't know I mean Iowa, when you think about rural America, I mean, that is rural America. I mean, hard work, grit, blue collar, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. that's what has embodied you today. Yeah. I mean, I can see it. It's awesome. Yeah, and I, like, you know, I come from a very blue collar family. Like, yep. it was, like, I think they were all, like, you know, excited for me, but a little, like, what? You're going to move to Nashville and become a country music singer like that just didn't happen yeah. you know so I I just love it it's like a pig with wings you know um when pigs a day when pigs fly you know it's like 
kind of doing the impossible a little bit. But um, anyways, I put that out. I put it out on my record label. And I toured behind that record. Pandemic hit. You know, I went back into creative mode. Yep. Started working on a record called Raised. And Nicole approached me. And she um, wanted to sign me along with Big Loud. So, um, you know, they offered me a record deal. I had come so far already. I wasn't like willing to sign just any record deal, you know? Um, I'd been doing a lot of label meetings. It didn't feel right to me. And this one felt right to me. So um, yeah, it's it's been like a really, really great partnership. It's, you know, everything I've released is Pegasus, Big Loud, Songs and Daughters. And Nicole's just been an incredible champion to me. And it, it feels very special just because I really think she like knows where I come from yeah, and you know who I am. And she's been able to help me like really bring that to life in a, that's great in the music industry. I feel like I do a pretty good job on like finding out when I have someone that comes on the show, what their trait is to the American oh, yeah? farmer. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm pretty good. So you tell your family, Hey, I'm going to Nashville. I'm going to be a, country music artist mm-hmm. you start your own label because nobody else would sign you to a label mm-hmm. like you have an entrepreneur mm-hmm. like heart mind yeah. that is a farmer right i mean yeah. they have to build up their own operation they have to decide when and where and what to grow yep like where do you get that from because you are an entrepreneur at the end of the day i'm just like hearing my dad's voice right now and he'd always say like get her done you know just what i mean it and it's just like that mentality of like nobody's going to do it for you. If you want something done, go out, do it. You know, um, that's, that's what I'm, that's what's coming to mind right now. But yeah, I mean, I think just, I really owe so much to like how I grew up and getting to see that all the time. Yeah. What do you think has been the biggest hurdle that you speaking on adversity, Mm -hmm. the biggest hurdle Mm -hmm. that you've had to face so far when it comes to what the main goal is in life? Um, in country oh, music. in life or country music? Yeah. Um, both now that you're, I think like really owning who you are and like, you know, I think that this town can sometimes like force you into being the same as everyone else. Yep. You know, what's working, what's working on the radio. We need That's 10 exactly more Jason Aldean. Cor- you know what I mean? Yep. And, and so, you know, I think it takes a lot of guts to like really stick to who you are and you may, it may not be popular at the moment, but if you stick it out and like stay true, you will have your moment. Um, I think that, and then I think just like in a town that is always looking to tell, you no, like you have to just show up every day, work hard and it'll eventually turn into a yes, you know? You're a badass. You know, dude. That? You're a badass. <laughs> I love that. You're a badass. <laughs> um, you recently, not too long ago, you won. Was it new female yeah. artist of the year? Yeah, baby. Found that. Love that. Woo. Good yes. for you. How did that feel? Because I think, yeah. I mean, hell, it Shania was the one that was presenting it, right? Or who presented? Well, Dolly the, was the one who like Dolly. no. Dolly announced me on the stage for okay. my performance, which just like made me nearly pass out right yeah. before I had to sing. But um, Gabby Barrett actually okay. presented me with my award. Were um, you like? I mean, what was the first thing that you felt and said? Just like, gosh, what was the first thing I said? I'm trying to remember. I feel like I just, you know, I was so nervous. Um, but I remember like finding out I was just like so many emotions you know because it really has been such like an up and down journey and there that was such an incredibly tough category I did not think I was going to win that at all so then when I got you know I found out that I did I was just like smiling like a false tooth salesman like I just could not stop (laughs) smiling you know and it just felt really good because it was just like very validating where it was just like I've been here for 15 years. You know what I mean? And I, there's definitely been moments where I'm like, I don't think this is going to happen for you. You might need to start like finding a new career. And so that was just very validating to me to know that like, you're on the right path. You're doing it. Keep going. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that right there should speak to 
who I'm assuming is our audience and should be, and that's not only the farmer side, but just the the people side is like, don't ever give up. Yeah. I mean, Nashville, I'm telling you, like everybody, if 10 year town, 10 year town, yeah. keep waiting. Yeah. And you're over here like, hell, I'm fine with a 10 year town. Like, yeah. yeah. I've been here for 15 years. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. What yeah. keeps you motivated? I mean, what's like the number one thing if I said, hey, what, like, what keeps you day in and day out getting up and writing, singing, performing? Um, well, I want to buy a farm. <laughs> so okay, that, like, now keeps we're me motivated. Into... It's like, keep going. There we like, go. I got this little picture of this farm in my mind. So Where's I, the farm? I mean, hell, let's talk about that. Back home in Iowa. Like, I definitely want to go back home to Iowa and, like, you know, get a farm and, and you know, all that. So that keeps me motivated. And I think just what like. What do you want to do on the farm? I'm not going to let, I'm not going to well, go I'm, away from I'm this subject. Gonna, I love like, this. be, you know, hopefully still singing songs and, and making music. Totally. But I mean, like, I want to get some pigs, <laughs> you know. I mean, and, you, you consider yourself a farmer right now, I feel like. I mean, you come, where you come from, what yeah. you want to do. I mean. I would love to, like, be able to do that at some point. You know, I'm, I'm way too busy right now to yeah. probably, like, manage a farm. Yeah. But um, when I think about, like, the, you know years down the road like where do I want to be it's like on a farm in Iowa um, that's a great dream yeah and I think like the, th the other part that keeps me going is like the feeling of writing a song that like you just know like when you're done you're like this is something great you know yeah. and like I can't wait to sing this and record it and have other people hear it you know like there's just no high, like the high you get from writing something that you just really like feel. Yeah. And getting to go out and like share that with the world and and see that other people feel it too. Um, I think that just it's so pure and that also just keeps me waking up every day. Love <laughs> you that. know, grinding it out, um, chasing songs. What's the uh, what's your favorite song that you've written so far? Gosh, um, it's been a lot. I wrote a song called Janice at the Hotel Bar that okay. I love. Uh, it was inspired by a true story. Actually, there's like an eighty-something-year-old woman who lives in Jersey, and a friend of mine had met her at a hotel bar, and they just like started striking up conversation and talking about all these things, you know, um, and she just had so much wisdom and the like hook in that song is go out and make a good living, but don't forget to make a good life. And I think that that's something I've always, you know, the hard worker in me is like work, 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 work totally, all the yeah. time. And yeah. I think it's like also important to, you know, make sure you're like having a good life, you know, go get out to the farm, go fishing, go ride four wheelers, whatever it is that like grounds you yeah. and like, you know, and um, really just makes you feel good. Like, make sure, have a little bit of work, a little bit of play. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. What you, and we've talked before, and I feel like you write most of your songs, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Where do you, is there like a common place that you go to write songs? Well, you know, I write a lot like on the row here. Yeah. Um, that's honestly like where I've had the most time you know, yeah. to be right. Whenever I'm kind of, I'm touring so much right now that it's like when I'm in writing mode, it's usually, you know, on the road down here in Nashville. Yep. Um, but someday when I have my farm, I'll That's be able to write the up there. That's going to be the spot. I love that. Yeah. I've, I've been trying to figure out some of these quotes or words that are tied to you. There's something called our grass is legal. <laughs> yeah. Like what is yeah. that? Can you explain that? Yeah. So my grandpa had a sod farm, um, a turf farm that all my dad and like his brothers, my dad's one of nine. My mom and dad are both one of nine and my dad, like him and his one of nine. Mm -hmm. And then how many siblings do you have? I'm one of six. Wow. Yeah. Okay. There ain't a lot to do up there. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Holy moly. Um, but uh, my dad, you know, there were six boys. So all the boys were always working in the field with yep. grandpa and, you know, growing grass. And my grandma was answering the phones, you know, keeping the business afloat. And um, he like my everyone kept calling my the line 
asking for pot, you know, Witter's turf farms. They thought, are you kidding they thought me? he, you know, he's selling, he's growing grass and yeah. they think he's like growing weed. So, hmm. um, they wow. kept calling and asking for weed. And so my grandpa made his business motto, Witter's turf farms, our, our grass, grass is, is legal. legal. I love you know, that. and so, um, yeah, it's just super funny. And I actually have his old hat um, and it has like dirt stains and stuff on it still. It's so cool. And, um, you know, he ended up that's what he did. That's what my uncles all did before they all kind of branched out and started their own businesses and, yeah. and whatnot. But that's where that came from. Yeah. Hometown. Yep. I always like to ask people that I know that I've spent a lot of time on farms and What's like a good farm story that you remember? Man, I don't know. Like we used to go out to, this is pretty, this is kind of like really stupid, but we used to go out to my aunt's farm and like get out in the pasture and, you know, my cousins and we'd all try and like rile up the cows and the bull and stuff and try and get it. We'd like take off, run and jump on the three wheeler, like get them to chase us and then speed off. That was always like really fun. When I think about like growing up, I have so many just like happy memories at my aunt's farm. You know, I think just growing up on a farm is such like a beautiful thing for a kid to get to have. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And um, she had just like this apple tree in the backyard and there were always the chickens and the pigs and like her big garden, you know, and I think just like getting to see that and getting to go over there and just kind of be a kid was like a really great part of my childhood yeah yeah now the newest album raised Mm -hmm. that that title came from kind of hometown back Mm -hmm. home yeah I wrote a song called raised and when we started to see like the record just taking shape um it was all about growing up and like where I came from the people the place and so the roots yeah the roots it just seemed like the perfect title to the record you've been on tour Mm mm-hmm what a like how's that been who's been like the best person to go on tour with so far that's mean it's not and i don't mean that in like a mean way and honestly like i i get what you're saying on that but what's like the most fun you've had on tour we had so much fun because you and like before you answer like you have been on tour with a lot of great people so i understand where you're coming from yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like this is a hard question we had so much fun on the Ain't Always the Cowboy Tour with John Party and oh, Lady Wilson. Oh, I can only imagine, like, yeah. <laughs> it was just so fun, and everyone just, like, got along. You know what yeah. I mean? And, like, that sounds weird to say, but just, like, it was just, like, friends hanging out the whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, it just felt like you're on the road and, like, you know, you're constantly being uprooted and, like, moved to new places. And it just felt like we had this just, like, really good hang. I mean, John has the party bar, so we'd hit the party bar yeah. every night, you know. And, like... He lives up to his last name. He man. is so fun. <laughs> I mean, we would just... And we would literally shut it down, like, every night. It was so funny because we just blast country music. You know what I mean? Drink beer, listen to country music all night long. And... There were like several nights that we would like close the party bar down and it would be so funny because you knew the night was coming to a close when like he has this long bar oh, and yeah. like the TM would just come and start like pulling the tables away and we'd just keep moving down to like the what was left and then <laughs> they'd come and pull another table away. That's great. And then we'd like just move down and then there was like we just had this little like square bar and then like they'd come and take that one away. And then we were like, "Well, I guess we got to yeah, go home, time you to know." Go home now. So, we'd just roll on to the next town and that was so much fun. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Um you're going on tour soon. Yeah. With Luke Bryan. Yeah, Luke Bryan. So that will be another. I mean, yes. geez, you're, these are some great. We're all over the place. We're going out with Dirks. We're going out with Eric Church, yeah. Luke Bryan. Yeah. So you just put a new song out yeah. and it's called I'm in love. Yeah. And I was fortunate enough to get to hear it before it was released. Yes. Appreciate the love on yes. that. Yes. That's an unbelievable song. Like, Thanks. tell me about that song. Um, that song, I love that song. I didn't write that one. Nicole Gallion, Cameron Bedell, Lee Miller wrote that song okay. and they brought it in. And I mean, first listen, I was like, I'm done. Like, I love this. I got to record this. Um, it just felt like so my language and 100%. Yeah. Like, when I listen to that song, like 
Haley Wooders yeah. immediately. Like that yeah. was, that's your song. It was so fun. And, um, you know, I, we did a music video for that. So go check that out. Um, I got to be a mechanic. <laughs> that's in great. It. I'm sure you um, love that. Yes. We talked a lot about rural America, where you came from, you, you're built from your roots and you haven't forgot about them, which I love that you come from not only a farming town, but really a farming state. Like Mm -hmm. what are, what's one thing you would say to that community and, and just rural America as a whole? I just have so much admiration for them. You know what I mean? Like I get, I get to sing songs and write songs and like call it work, you know, but they're out sun up to sundown in the fields working hard you know sometimes for little to no payoff you know it's such a risky thing and um they're out there and they're doing it and they're keeping keeping everything going round and i just have so much admiration for for that community so one of my favorite segments on like a farmer mm-hmm. i call the biggest gamble yeah Farmers take a gamble every day, obviously. Yeah, yeah. What is the biggest gamble you've ever taken in your life? I think, like, the greatest gamble for me is, like, choosing to pursue this profession. Like, you know, because there is just, you know, you are broke a lot of the time, you know? Yeah. And it's just um, trying to make a living off of being creative is really crazy and hard, you know, uh, trying to pull things out of the air every day and make money off that. Yeah. Um, and being in Nashville, a 10 year town for 15 years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm calling you a modern day pioneer in Mm. women's country music. Like I'm saying, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm fangirling over here. But like, what would you say to like the women the girls, right, at that at, at younger age that want to get into country music? I would say don't let anyone tell you no. Like, keep going and um, study your heroes, you know, the people that you love. Like, figure out what they were doing and be yourself, you know. I think that a, this town will try and mold you into this thing and, like, you know, go out and be who you are and yep. be unique and – um do that you know so obviously being the corn star that you are i do have i have a game that i want to play we're going to do a taste testing of popcorn okay (laughs) i've got multiple flavors of popcorn that we got here in nashville and i want to see if um i want to see if you can guess the flavors all right let's do it let's do it okay you go first okay i'll go Mm, i don't know (coughs) Little, little spicy. It tastes like um, what's the oh. cereal? Doesn't it taste like a cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Golly. Yeah. Wow, that's got some kick. It does. Um, all right. So, what's your guess with that? Um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I might go Nashville Hot with that. Nashville Hot Chicken. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. And okay. you're going Cinnamon Toast. Let's see what it is. Oh, N H. What is NH? Nashville hot. Oh, shoot. Yeah. You got it. That was so spicy. It was. Okay. Popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, something sweet in that one. Um, I'm going to go... Uh, buttered popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> buttered. I'm going to go... Uh, got like a garlic taste to it, too. Buttered that garlic. One? Buttered garlic popcorn. Yeah, I'm going to go with that, too. <laughs> R-B-S-S. Uh, is that rosemary, butter? Sea salt. Sea salt. Is rosemary like garlic? No. Okay, so we were like... Nope. Okay, we're wrong on that one. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, next one. All right, I'm hoping this is a chicken wing. Buffalo. I like that. That tastes like pizza. It does taste like pizza. Yeah. Wow. Pepperoni pizza. Yep. Pizza. Nice. Damn, that's a good one. My refined palate can Here, tell let's pizza. let's see if I can. Oh, here, <laughs> God dang. Hold what on. was that? Hold on one more. Hold on one more. Ah. Oh, one more. No, one Third more. time's a charm. Ah. Oh, hold on one more. One more. No, okay. hold on. Let no, me try on. one. Right, Let yeah. me try one. Oh, wait, yeah. one. Hold on. 
Oh no, that was I Your tried, teeth no. knocked right, it here, out. Here, here. Boom! Yes. All right. Okay. All right. What's this one? This one actually looks like French dessert. toast. French toast. Like cinnamon. Cinnamon toast crunch. Yep. That's the cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, that uh, churro. Churro, yeah. Well, we're kind of close. close, yeah. Churro, that's pretty good. Buttered popcorn. Well, is it like cheesy too? <laughs> Buttered is garlic this popcorn. No, I'm going white cheddar. This is white. White cheddar. chedder. That makes. What sense. are you going? Yeah, white cheddar, okay. macaroni and cheese. That's cheddar. Boom. Damn, what are good. we? Two for five. Um, Three for five for you. <laughs> yeah. Three for five. That was awesome. Hey. That was fun. That was. Once again, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. This, this is was awesome. awesome. I love thanks it. Thanks again for Ag America for always presenting yes. the show like a farmer. And as always, like, comment, subscribe. Do whatever you got to do to be like a farmer.